Hello Angel Faces, welcome back to my Vibing with the Tarot series. Today we're going to look at the Hierophant. I am very excited to break down some of the light and shadow of this card, get into a little bit what my own journey has been, and hopefully give you some amazing ways of interpreting this card when it comes up. I'm going to talk a little bit about my opening thoughts and then we're going to go, as always, into some of the nicer and the nastier areas of the card's meaning. That's what I do with every single video in this series. I want to talk about light and shadow. I want to talk about what's gorgeous about the card and then what's difficult about the card. So I'm going to go into both of those areas. But before I do, let me just say that every single video in the Vibing With series is sponsored by me. I am indeed a professional award-winning card slinger. And so if you would like your cards read by me, you can pop on over to my store and have a look through my glorious plethora of uh, of reading options. I have absolutely tons, guys. I have your standard custom design where I will just have a look at your needs and, you know, work something out for you. You know, I will figure out what cards are necessary for you, what positions, and we'll go with it. But there's also loads and loads of different template readings. So if you're looking for something to fit a certain theme, if you're not sure what you want and you want to have a little browse, you can go ahead and do that. I also offer a ton of different mentoring and spiritual counselling options and stuff like that. So go and have a browse, look around, okay? I'm always happy to see returning clients and I'm always happy to see new clients as well. So come and work with me if you feel called to do so. Okay, here we go. Card number five, the Hierophant. And I'm showing you here the Hierophant from my Deviant Moon tarot. I always pretty much show you the card from the deck that I've got closest to hand or that I've been working with during the day. And this time it's the Deviant Moon, which looks like a very, very scary image of the Hierophant there. And I will say that there are some scary aspects to the Hierophant. There's a lot of difficulty for a lot of readers and a lot of students of tarot with the Hierophant. And I want to talk a little bit about my own journey first. So I've had a bit of a slippery relationship with this card over time. I love it now, but that wasn't always the way. And there was a meme that was doing the rounds in the community a while ago now that said that statistically the Hierophant is the least liked card in the deck, okay? So statistically, on average, tarot readers do not like the Hierophant. The Hierophant is the one that most tarot readers will sort of groan at and say, oh, you know what, that is really the one that I like the least, the one that I have the most problems with. And it does make sense because the Hierophant is usually a figure in tarot who looks like a figure of religious authority, right? They usually look like a cardinal or a pope, somebody wearing a lot of like religious regalia and kind of like ready to do some kind of sermon or impart some kind of religious knowledge. And we all know that for a lot of tarot readers, that is going to be a bit of a difficult figure. That's going to be a figure that a lot of people have shadows around and are triggered by and feel like they want to reject and feel like there's a difficulty with a figure like that, who is kind of assuming some kind of religious superiority, some kind of teaching that you're not allowed to go against, you know? Something that really is kind of um, very intensely foisted upon us and we are supposed to be obeying, we're supposed to be subservient. I think that's what a lot of people think of when they see the Hierophant. That is their first image of the Hierophant going into learning tarot. And I think a lot of readers have a bit of a, a hangover around the Hierophant, that even when they do get a lot of different interpretations and they read more broadly, there is something about the Hierophant that rubs them up the wrong way. I'm not really sure that was my experience entirely. I definitely think that was part of it. But I also just think that the Hierophant is obviously very in line with things like structure, discipline, learning, rigidity, you know, systems, respect for systems, respect for different aspects of learning, respect for rules, you know. And so I think that was where it really hit me being very Sagittarius and very kind of out there with my rebel archetype to the front. A figure like the Hierophant is always going to be one that will cause me some bother along the way with my learning and when I would see the card come up. Um, but you know, you have to do a lot of work when you're a professional reader to make sure that you are right with each and every single one of the cards and you do not have these kinds of hang-ups. You have to understand really the full spectrum of the meaning of a card. Otherwise, you're going to really paint the card with a lot of bias and that's not useful. It's not helpful when you're reading for people. So I definitely went on a journey to break into my understanding of the Hierophant and deepen my love for the Hierophant. I had to really like strengthen that connection. I had to give a lot of time and energy to that bond. And I'm hoping that some of that work that I've done is going to come through 
for you guys today when I break down the nice and nasty of the Hierophant essentially. So we'll have a look at what is really beautiful and what is great. And for a lot of people, I think that's going to be the, the bulk of the video that's going to make um, a lot of difference to you. And then we'll go into the more difficult area, which I think is where a lot of readers end up landing and they kind of stick there until they get that more well-rounded view. So let me know down below, are you coming into this video with a little bit of a difficult relationship with the Hierophant? Are you perhaps maybe tuning into this particular video because you want to be prompted to reframe the Hierophant? If so, I hope that there is something that I can do for you today, my darlings. I really do because the Hierophant has got a lot of depth, a lot of nuance, a lot of layers and the Hierophant was not quite what I thought in the beginning. This particular card definitely gave me a lot that I could really hold on to and be inspired by, but I had to get there. I had to go through some doors. I had to do some work. I had to do some learning. So that is what I want to impart to you today. If you're struggling with the Hierophant, if you feel like, you know, you've really sort of latched on to that idea that this is like a this is a really sort of bolshy, insistent teacher who says that there is one right way and insists upon discipline and insists upon subservience. And I'm just supposed to be the mindless pupil drinking up everything that the Hierophant is telling me. And I have like no opportunity for free will whenever this figure is in play. And I don't like the idea of me being like that. And I don't like the idea of anyone being like that with me. And that's kind of where I'm sticking. This video hopefully will give you a little bit more to play with. So let's get into the beautiful side first, the what I would call the light side. OK, I've been calling it light and shadow, but you can think of it as whatever you want. But we're going to think about some of the benefits of the Hierophant, some of the more joyous aspects when they come up. And then we'll go into like the grimy, gritty underbelly, the stuff that is more difficult to process and work with. The Hierophant is a teacher. The Hierophant is a sage. They're a guide. They're a mentor. They're a keeper of knowledge. And they really enjoy also imparting that knowledge. So the more that they understand and the more nuances of something that they get into, the better they are at teaching and imparting that knowledge to other people. And they're very interested in the ripple effect, right? So once they've taught somebody, then that person can go and teach somebody and the knowledge is spread farther and wider. So that's one of the really beautiful aspects of the Hierophant is that they are a teacher, they're a guide, and they want to be able to put forth knowledge in the interests of other people's minds opening up and other people also having access to this wisdom and this understanding that they have gleaned from being really invested with discipline and concentration in their subject. Subject, whatever that subject happens to be. I don't personally think it's helpful to only think of the Hierophant as someone who's interested in religious knowledge and religious study, although that is part of it. But I think the Hierophant is really interested actually in just any study that has to do with the world and has to do with systems, you know? So we're looking at law, we're looking at governance, we're looking at economy, we're looking at languages and culture. I think we're looking at anything that has any dominion over us or that affects people at large or affects large groups of people. I think the Hierophant is interested in history. I think the Hierophant is interested in sociology and ecology. The Hierophant is really someone that wants to grasp a subject and take it to the nth degree. Very often this card will come up when a Quirin is really interested in going further with their learning, developing, doing further training, you know, going further, like going to master's level or PhD level or training in a certain area, getting certifications and diplomas. So very often we can read the Hierophant quite literally as someone who really wants to intake a lot of knowledge and then maybe wants to also impart that knowledge as well. But a really cool thing about the Hierophant is that in order for the Hierophant to be a good teacher of whatever their subject is, they also have to be um, a really sort of like insatiable pupil. So a good Hierophant is both a teacher and a pupil. And those two roles kind of dance together because a good teacher is never done with their learning, right? So, you know, when the Hierophant is operating consciously in a reading, it could be the part of you or the part of somebody else who not only is really sort of like interested in insatiable learning, but also wants to sort of deliver that learning outwardly. It can also come up in a reading when you're looking for a good guide or mentor or teacher, you know, but it's really about like what you want to learn, what you want to get into your noggin and how you want to use it and how you want it to shape the way you think about life. The Hierophant does not want to be left in the dark. I think very often the Hierophant represents the part of us that wants access to understanding, you know, the part of us that knows that on some level we might not fully know about something that we really want to know about for our betterment. And maybe we feel that we don't know enough about 
that area or we feel that things have been kept from us. So we feel curious, you know, the Hierophant is our curiosity. The Hierophant is our desire to like pull back the curtains on a subject and really look at it fully and feel that the areas where we were shaky in our understanding have now been filled in because we have kind of like pursued that understanding further. The Hierophant is actually very smart about knowing that there are a lot of different systems and processes and institutions and rules around things that if the Hierophant doesn't know them, that's a problem because they're in the dark, they're naive to the way those things work. And the Hierophant is allergic to naivety, okay? The Hierophant wants to be really in there with knowing and understanding the deeper nuances of things. And wherever there is secrecy and wherever there is kind of a, like a locked door and there is knowledge behind that door, the Hierophant is like, give it to me. I want to understand how that works. What do I need to do to get through that door to understand the deeper nuances of this thing? So the Hierophant is naturally aware that knowledge is power. That's really the big thing about the Hierophant. Knowledge is power. You're going to be talking about how the economies of Virginia and Pennsylvania were entrepreneurial and capitalist way back in 1740. That's going to last until next year. You're going to be in here regurgitating Gordon Wood talking about, you know, the pre-revolutionary utopia and the capital forming effects of military mobilization. And whether or not the Hierophant chooses to use that power in a good way remains to be seen, depending on where you are with the spectrum of meaning with the card. But the idea that knowledge is power is something that is, you know, usually fundamentally a good thing for the most part. So this is where we would go into, you know, the, the nice and the, and the, the glistening side of the Hierophant is that idea that the more you know, the more you can do. The more you know, the more you can kind of like work your understanding of something so that it works for you, so that it works on your behalf. The Hierophant does not want to be caught out. The Hierophant wants the information, okay? They want to be able to come correct with the facts so that when they're in a situation where they're going to be questioned on something or where they're trying to access something and they know that there might be certain forces at work to keep them out of that, you know, um, certain things that would make it a problem problem for them to get there, they know those things, they can answer those questions, they can cite those facts that they've learned. So the Hierophant knows that knowledge makes it easier for them to help themselves or help others to get further. And one thing I love about the Hierophant is that I think the Hierophant is particularly interested in structure, in institutions, in organisations, and in the way the world is set up, right? So the way I think about the Hierophant is that they want an understanding of the way that the world runs for better or worse. And I don't always think that the Hierophant is interested in upholding those rules and those systems. I think of the Hierophant in the positive conscious area of things as a person who might want understanding of institutions and rules so that they can sophisticatedly break them so that they can challenge them, you know? Many people only think of the Hierophant as someone who just wants to uphold rules and uphold systems and, you know, be disciplined around tradition and around like, you know, this is the way we do things and this is how things ought to be done. But I think when the Hierophant is operating consciously that they're just as likely to be a person who knows that they cannot create change in the area that they want to create change unless they understand the status quo. They need to be clear about what is going on already, what is in the foundations of this system or this belief or this structure or this way of doing things, because I want to change it. I want to see if we can reshape it. I want to see if it can be better. I want to see if it can be healthier for people. And so I need to learn it inside out, right? So I think the Hierophant, for example, can be somebody who goes into learning law so that they can ultimately change the law so that then they can kind of like create landmark instances of making the law better and fairer. So I don't always think the Hierophant is some tyrant who is like, we need to stick to the way things are and the way things have always been. And I'm gonna learn all about that so I can enforce it. I think that the positive side of the Hierophant is like, well, you know what? I don't think this is working. And so I need to know it inside out, back to front all the way. And I need to be able to know it, you know, off by heart so that I can then figure out how I'm going to challenge it, how I'm going to make it different, how I'm going to update it, or ultimately how I'm going to dismantle it. You know, so I do think the Hierophant can be a real force for good in that way. It really depends what you want to learn and teach for. You know, what is your motivation? Because the idea of the Hierophant as being this teacher, this guide, this mentor, um, and learning more and more so they can teach more and more, that energy is rather like electricity. It's neither good or bad. 
like a great many energies in tarot, you can either use it to light something up or blow something up. It really depends what you've got your mind on and what your motivation is. The Hierophant isn't automatically somebody with a bad motivation, somebody that's seeking to uphold and to restrict, you know, and to command. Sometimes the Hierophant is someone who's like, I learned all of this so I could do something differently. I learned all of this so I will be acceptable in the rooms where change could take place. So the Hierophant can be cunning in a very kind of like high-minded, idealistic way. And so it can be that part of you that seeks to understand something so that you can change it, not so that you can automatically uphold it. The Hierophant is really disciplined. In Tarot, the Hierophant, I think, is one of the most disciplined figures. They are very steadfast in their learning. They make a commitment and they go after that, you know. They really want to um, apply themselves and they want to see what applying themselves can actually achieve, you know. So the Hierophant does have that discipline. They make a commitment to what it is that they're trying to do. And they really, really go into the subject deeply. So the Hierophant is not interested in just skimming the surface with whatever they're trying to understand and whatever they're trying to then go on to teach or provide others with. They want a deep, deep knowing. And that's something positive about the Hierophant. It can represent your willingness to really, really go several layers deeper than you've been before. And your willingness to really kind of like become a specialist in something, to really be committed to the subject. And so it can often represent that part of you that's like, okay, let's do this for real, for real, okay? Not just skimming over it, but really, really cracking it open like a creme brulee and getting my brain all the way in. So that can be a very positive aspect of this card. I know I just mentioned that the Hierophant can definitely be a rule breaker in a strategic way, okay? The Hierophant can definitely look at a set of rules, look at a set of teachings and say, how might this be different? How could I play with this? And that's a positive aspect. But but I will also say in the Hierophant's defense that when the Hierophant is trying to uphold a set of rules or keep to a certain structure, it can often be because they really want more order. So, you know, if I think, for example, about myself, I'm very haphazard, okay? I'm very much more chaos than I am order. I find it really difficult sometimes to stick with things and see them to the end. And I have a lot of different, like I'm quite scattered in the way that I approach subjects, in the way that I approach learning, and in the way that I apply myself. So for me, one great thing about the Hierophant is that it really tunes me in to that part of me that is like, I'm really gonna stick to the rules that I've set for myself. I'm gonna stick to the rules that are, you know, in this subject that I'm learning. If I'm learning a language, if I'm learning an instrument, if I'm learning, you know, a particular tradition of magic, whatever it is, I'm gonna really like come to understand it and stick to it rather than kind of like running off and going down the rabbit hole and like doing my own thing and stuff. I'm gonna really see if I can take that more orthodox approach, you know, because sometimes we do need that. And sometimes we have to believe in our ability to be able to keep going with that and to have confidence in the fact that we can understand something, even if we're intimidated by the amount of learning that's involved, even if we feel that we are not capable of taking on all of that understanding. The Hierophant is the part of us that needs to be confident and self-assured in the fact that we can really go there, we can really understand, and we don't have to feel intimidated by these giant subjects and these masses of rules and these different things that seem like really hard to get to grips with and hard to stick with. The Hierophant is the part of us that is like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make that commitment. For example, nobody could qualify as a doctor without having a Hierophant archetype within them. Nobody could qualify. Nobody could like, you know, go through loads of systems of learning and training and come out the other side certified or whatever, unless they had that Hierophant in them. You know, you've got to have that Hierophant in you to do that. And so there is something really special about that. And when it comes to teaching, the Hierophant is somebody that will instill that discipline. They are someone that will say, hey, you can do this. Don't worry about what you think you're not going to be able to manage or achieve. Just focus on the next step and the next step. As I'm giving you what you need, you are taking on what you can. And I love that and keep going. So the Hierophant can be a really like positive guide, a really awesome mentor who keeps you going when you feel like you're going to give up, when you feel like your brain just cannot take all of this stuff in. The Hierophant is that really great piano teacher or that really amazing history teacher, that really awesome spiritual teacher who says, no, no, you know, like keep coming back to it. Keep trying, try in different ways. Let's be dynamic about the teaching. If you're not understanding it this way, we can do it another way. 
you know, so the Hierophant is infused about learning and also seeing other people learn. Knowledge is the whole thing. Understanding and knowledge is the whole thing. Being excited about that and being excited about the steps towards that. The Hierophant really wants to encourage growth and really wants to encourage understanding. And yes, there is an aspect of that sometimes that can be about growing within a tradition, you know, doing things by degrees, coming up in a certain way that is the tried and tested way. And we can push back against that sometimes. We can feel like that's too rigid. That's not how I want to do things. That's not my style. And the Hierophant sometimes will put their foot down. It's the aspect of yourself or someone else that will say, no, you don't get to rebel here. You have to do things according to certain principles and you will understand why later on, but it must be done this way. You know, but that's not always a bad thing. That's not always a negative. We do sometimes have to understand that we've got to learn to walk before we can run. We've got to learn the basics before we can go on into the fruitier and juicier and more exciting stuff. So the Hierophant is that person that wants to see growth, wants to see development. It's that aspect of you that wants to see it within you. And it's that aspect of another that wants to promote it within you. And yes, sometimes it's to do with tradition and it's to do with like age old principles and it's to do with like a certain system, a certain way of doing things. But it's not always bad to know that we can actually put both feet in to that and say, yeah, OK, I'm going to learn that. I'm going to do it that way. Um, and if later you want to fuck with the rules, then you can. But at least, you know, that you have the discipline to be able to stick to something and see it through. So on the more shadow side of things, my darlings, on the more difficult side, yes, the Hierophant can definitely represent fanaticism, OK, because the Hierophant is very interested in teaching, being a keeper of knowledge, being a mentor, being a sage and imparting guidance on how to do something or how to understand something, of course, there is going to be an aspect of them that could fall prey to rigidity and fanaticism and insistence, you know, and bossiness and bullying and kind of being a bit of a tyrant about the way things are supposed to be done and the correct understanding of something. I also think the Hierophant can be perhaps in the shadow area, very persuasive around that and very kind of like one right way and one right truth. And I think the Hierophant maybe has their methods for making us believe the things that the Hierophant thinks are right, you know? And so to me, the Hierophant can have in the shadow side, a little bit of a cult leader kind of vibe, you know? He is sacred God the heavenly trumpet sound his name. The one true God comes to rapture. Little bit of a like very charismatic, very sort of like um, very uh, insistent, very inspiring, but in kind of a like, take my elixir, you know, believe what I want you to believe. Do things the way I would say that you should do them. And it's kind of like that gets uncomfortable because then we're looking at a power struggle, you know. In the conscious aspect of the Hierophant, the Hierophant knows themselves that sometimes there has to be a power struggle and a break with the rules. And that's why they seek to understand the rules and teach the rules to give themselves and others the power to break them when necessary. In the shadow side, the Hierophant is very insistent on the rules and the rules could be very, very unique to that Hierophant figure. And the Hierophant could be very like, domineering in terms of like, you will believe these rules and I will do the things I need to do to make you believe them and carry them out. So the Hierophant can definitely have that egoic side where they are fanatical, they are insistent, and they want you to listen to them um, with no sense that you're allowed to question them with no sense that there is any room for a will of your own or um, any sort of space to disagree. So that's definitely a shadow with the Hierophant. And I think that's something that a lot of readers do struggle with at one time or another is seeing the Hierophant come up and feeling like this is a person who wants to be strict, who wants to insist on their way, who isn't going to let me do anything, you know, in my own manner, in my own style. And I'm just going to be like rigidly under the thumb. I'm under the knowledge cosh of the Hierophant and I don't like it and I want to break free, you know? So yeah, there can be that aspect to the Hierophant. That can be difficult. The Hierophant can 
can represent conformity. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes, you know, identifying with a system or a group or a way of doing things can be very helpful to everyone and to oneself. Um, agreeing with others about a way of doing things and carrying it out that way and teaching it that way to others doesn't always have to be bad. But when we're looking at the really difficult side, the more nasty aspect of the Hierophant, it can be the case that they insist upon conformity um, at the expense of people's individuality, at the expense of people's individual wishes. You know, so a Hierophant can represent that part of you that is struggling to cycle break, that the Hierophant can represent, you know, a really sort of tyrannical parent, um, a tyrannical boss, uh, a feeling within a group that there is just this way of doing things in a friendship group or whatever, and you're kind of not allowed to break free, you feel like you're not allowed to speak your mind because there is this Hierophant energy happening. You know, so the Hierophant doesn't always represent an individual. The Hierophant can represent just an energy of having to conform, having to be strictly a part of something um, in this way that does not allow for you to be authentic and individual and to take issue with anything or have anything customised to your needs. There is this sense that like, no, it's this way and this is the way. And so when the Hierophant comes up in shadow, it can represent issues around that where you feel trapped by something. Maybe it's a belief system within yourself that you're struggling to crack and break out of or maybe it's something in your external life that you feel just very sort of like hemmed in by and very controlled by the hierophant can represent the energy of control and seeking to control one of the ways that i think about the hierophant when they're in shadow is in relation to kind of like a bad teacher okay a bad teacher i think is a teacher that's only going to teach you their way they're not going to really give you any sense of what else is out there, like what other ideas are on the table. They're really, for example, let's say um, a bad teacher of philosophy would only want to teach you about the philosophers that they care about, that they're interested in, that they think that you should follow. And they're going to teach you philosophy in this really biased way that is to do with their personality and what they think is like hunky dory, right? And they're not going to allow you to play in the field of ideas, okay? So a shadow hierarchy is not interested in letting you into the field of ideas. They want to keep you close. They want to keep you really like rigidly aligned with what they themselves think. So they're doing something in this really personal way. And therefore they're really kind of like cutting away their student's perception of what else is out there. You know, they're not letting the student explore. And this can sometimes come up in the way that you feel you're having something explained to you. Okay. So for example, if somebody is explaining to you what has been going on in a scenario with other friends or family members or loved ones and they're only giving you their very rigid view of things okay they're not really giving you any context that you might need they're kind of like shaping the story around the knowledge that they want you to have and they're only explaining things in a way that makes them look good or in a way that makes other people look suspect but actually when you come to know the full list of information when you come to understand the 360 round view of the situation, you see that actually you've been duped by someone who was only explaining things in a way that was beneficial to them. That's a shadow hierophant. That's somebody who wants to control the narrative. They only want to get someone to understand something according to what they think is correct. And that can come up in bad teachings. It can come up in you know, bad accounts of things that have happened. It's really that sense that like, I just want you to think what I want you to think. And I'm going to give you only the information that is going to give me that result. Anything else I'm going to hide from you. I'm going to take off the table. I'm not going to give you access to that stuff because that gives you the opportunity to really consider what you think. And I don't want that. I'm not interested in that. So it can be very tyrannical and manipulative, that Hierophant energy. The Hierophant can really represent our own individual rigidity. You know, like, how are we looking at things? Are we looking at things in this really narrow way? where we're only sort of considering the way that we were brought up, the way that we think that things should happen, the way that we understand things culturally, you know, any of that stuff. Are we only looking at that and like not really being able to see outside of that and therefore being very insistent and very strict with the way that we understand things? And that can affect our ability to problem solve. That can affect our ability to be in relationship with others in a healthy way. So sometimes our own inner hierophant is the part of us that is like, no, it's that way. That's the way I learned it. And that's the way I explain it to people. And it should be like that, you know? And so we're really like struggling to flow and to understand things that maybe we didn't come across in our learning or we didn't come across in our way of seeing things. It's different. 
it's different. It needs to be approached differently. The hierophant will be that part of us that is like, I'm resistant to that. I'm resistant to it. <laughs> I don't want to do that, right? So sometimes it comes up and asks us to challenge our perception of something. Is our perception fair? Is it broad enough? Are we trying to understand things we didn't understand before? Or are we just like rigidly saying, no, that's what I understand. That's my knowledge. And that's all I'm bringing to the equation. Sometimes this card is really about our resistance to change and our fear of things being different to what we know, our fear of the unknown. You know, if you think about the Hierophant as a knower and a keeper of knowledge, then you can think about the Hierophant as someone who is far more comfortable when they know and understand something. The idea that there is something outside of their scope of understanding, something different, something new, something they've only just come across, um, something that might be familiar to others but is unfamiliar to them, they might balk at that. They might have an issue with that. They might feel very, very out of their depth and very much like a fish out of water. And they can choose to react to that positively. But in the shadow nature of the Hierophant, it's you or someone else reacting to that negatively, feeling like, you know, you have to get defensive or you have to insist that things need to be the way they were before. It can often be a kind of nostalgia for the for the time when things were more understandable and, um, you know, were more kind of like in keeping with what you thought they should be. So the Hierophant can be resistant to like moving on and accepting that there's going to be a different energy now, there's going to be a different flow, there's going to be different opinions um, and different matters of interest. The Hierophant can be that part that is like stubbornly hanging on to the way that you saw things and the way that you thought that things were correct. Another thing that's really important to remember when you look at the shadow aspect of the Hierophant, my loves, is it can often be about whether or not you have the, the daring and the authenticity and, you know, really the true courage to challenge the teacher, to challenge the system, to say, I don't see why something should be this way. I don't understand why it has to be like this. You know, explain it to me further. Go into it because I'm not buying it. Whoever you feel like the Hierophant figure is in your life or whatever you feel the Hierophant figure is, it could be a friend, it could be a work colleague, it could be an entire political system, whatever it is, it's that thing that is sort of presenting you with an idea of what reality should be and how things should happen. And the Hierophant can turn up when it is your turn to sincerely say no. I don't think so somehow. I think that we could be more collaborative about this. We could be more experimental. We could do things differently. I don't think this system is fair. I don't think this is the way that we should go forward in the family or in the business or whatever it happens to be. So it's your moment of standing up and like taking a stand against power, taking a stand against the status quo, breaking with conformity. And when the Hierophant is in shadow, it's your unwillingness to do that, your fear of doing that, your fear of what will happen if you do that, even though you know it's what you really think you should do. So I, I guess it's like challenging the teacher, questioning the teachings, questioning what we all think is the ideal thing and pushing back on that and saying, I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure it's helpful to me. I feel like there could be a different way. I feel like there's some information missing here that I need. I feel like there's some reassurance here that I need, right? Rather than just nodding and being like, okay, yeah, sure, I guess that's the way it needs to be, right? So it challenges our meekness. That's what the Hierophant in Shadow does. And it sometimes shows us how we are being meek and how we are allowing something to continue without questioning, without questioning the teacher, because we're dazzled by the authority because we feel domineered over by somebody else or by the system that's already in place. And so it's asking us, whereabouts are you being too meek, too mild, too willing to go with it when actually deep down you don't think it's right? And of course, naturally, whereabouts are you being the Hierophant? It could be that you are the one that keeps insisting, we're doing it this way, we're thinking about it this way. And somebody else is saying, honey, I don't, you know, I don't, and you're going, ah, sh 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 I'm in charge. I'm the one that knows. So we also have to look at that aspect of ourselves too. Darlings, as always with my Vibing With series, there is absolutely no way that I can put all of the different nuances and ideas and interpretations into just this one video. So please get at me down below and let me know what else do you think the Hierophant is really all about? Is there anything that I said here that you feel you could add to? Is there anything missing? Let's have a discussion. I'm always so willing to have that discussion. I think the Hierophant is definitely one of those slow burns when it comes to the process of like connecting with the card and learning what the nuances of this figure could be. I think the card is very challenging. I think the card comes up in different positions and means something so different 
that it's almost like fascinating because of course the Hierophant has that core energy and that core characteristic sort of set, you know, but also depending on where it's placed, it can be incredibly different. Like it's fertile ground for a lot of different interpretations to be the case depending on what's happening. So let me know, has there been any time when the Hierophant has really given you such deep wisdom and such beautiful anchoring and guidance that you've been really thankful for the card? Is it a card that you actually feel really positive about when it comes up? And if so, let us know why, because I know there are lots of readers that could do with some of that encouragement to be able to see the Hierophant more positively. Don't forget, whenever you're reading the Hierophant, that the Hierophant is really like respectful of knowledge and respectful of the principles of a subject, respectful of any kind of institution or system that provides that kind of deep insight and knowledge. And that can go in either direction, right? It can go towards like illuminating more people people and having access to deeper understanding that really develops us as people and allows us to evolve and sometimes evolve beyond the original understanding. But it can also go in another direction where we want to uphold and we want to be rigid and maybe we even want to be elitist and push people out so we can have that sense that we have the knowledge, we can access the power, but other people can't. And that's where it becomes tyrannical. <laughs> And there's also just this idea that with the Hierophant, the Hierophant can either be in love with one idea or in love with the process of just having access to ideas. And one of them can be rigid and one of them can be like very conformist in a way that isn't good. And in the other way, it can be kind of like this explosion, this flower garden of knowledge that the Hierophant is interested in uh, intaking and then imparting, right? So definitely try to think about it in a nuanced way. If you've only re really looked at the Hierophant and seen, you know, rigidity and insistence and bossiness and domineering vibes, then you can also now start to think of the Hierophant as someone who is like a giver of knowledge in the interest of everybody expanding and deciding for themselves. You can think of the Hierophant as someone who really feels that part of the spirituality in how they are is to really give of themselves as a teacher and guide, but not to try to like control where you land with something. So you can have a good Hierophant, right? Or you can have a not so good Hierophant. Nice Hierophant or naughty Hierophant? Which one is it gonna be? I do wanna say before I end this video that a lot of people do see the Hierophant as kind of like the more, I guess, kind of like Yang side or the more kind of like forthright or forceful side of the High Priestess. And I can kind of see that. So the High Priestess would be someone who um, maybe guides you in terms of your own individual sovereign spiritual pathway and your own experiences that are unique to you. The Hierophant would maybe guide you in like a system of magic or a way of approaching something that has its roots in history. Um, the Hierophant is more about principles and structure and order and a way of doing things, whereas the High Priestess might be considered more your freewheeling spiritual teacher who prioritizes individual no over the sort of um, tenements of a tradition, okay? Tenements, tenets, tenets of a tradition. Sorry, I can't, I can't English right now. It's really late here. So basically, yeah, they can be two sides of a really interesting coin in terms of spiritual guidance. So you might want to think of them that way. And darlings, I have really, really loved positing to you some ideas about the Hierophant. Let me know where you land with this one. It's been really exciting to give you these uh, understandings that I've developed through my time as a pro card slinger. I can't wait to read the comments down below. I'm very interested in how you guys view this figure. So get at me and let's have some discussion. Much love until the next Vibing With episode and blessed be. Mwah.